everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Pengy, and today we're going to be doing something a little bit fun. I am currently live with my chat, with my stream, and we are going to be building a team together and bringing it directly into Nemesis's weekly ladder tournament. Uh, I have no idea what this team's going to gonna look like yet, so, you know, we'll, we'll see. I don't know if it's going to be a bit of a meme team. I don't know if it's going to be a good team. Uh, chat has a lot of say in what we end up building today, so let's get right on with it. Turtonator and Sylveon. These were the things that we were going to build around. So the interesting thing about Turtonator is that it kind of makes us not want to bring Incineroar because we have our fire type. I think we want Scarf Urshifu Water on this team. It adds to our Firewater Grass Core, and it's a really good answer to a Landorus that otherwise kind of owns us right now. How does chat feel about Scarf Urshifu Water? I think for now, I'm just going to put this in here. I'm going to recycle the spread that we used from Neil's video. Chats in uh, in the in, in the back of the bus with the Urshifu Rapid Strike. We're on the, all in the same headspace. Okay, this is good. We could go Rillaboom for the Firewater Grass Court. That leaves us with two of the three very common ways to build that, with the Scarf Waterfu, uh, Rillaboom, and then, you know, Turtonator replacing the Incineroar. Or, hear me out. How married are we to Sylveon Caffeine Intervention? Because we could run Tapu Bulu for no reason other than the fact that it might be a little neat. We need some way to, like, set up Turtonator. We need some way to guarantee that Turtonator is going to get value. We also need to decide how we want to run this Sylveon. No, I don't think that's a good idea. I, I was going to say maybe we go for, like, an, a weird non-Iron Defense Body Press Turtonator. So, like, people get baited into thinking that's what the stall Pokemon is, but it's actually the Sylveon. I mean, Mr. Neil says a lot of things. He also says that Grassy Seed Rillaboom is good. Galarian Moltres. Ooh, that's not a bad idea. Redirection does look good. Amoongus looks good. Uh, I was thinking Bulu Clefairy, and then Sylveon gets replaced by something, so we don't have Triple Fairy. See, we, we also have really cool things like Helping Hand potential on Clefairy for, like, Scarf Water Food. Do we like the idea of Sing? So here's the thing, right? If we run Sing on Clefairy, we basically have an Amoongus 55% of the time. <laughs> I mean, even if, you got, even if you're not, like, an expert at, at, like, competitive, feel free to suggest some stuff. Uh, I dig this moveset. I feel like Wide Guard could be Protect. Do we want to run Nasty Plot on the Moltres? I feel like with Clefairy, we kind of do. I, I'm, I'm seeing less and less value in this Bulu the more I look at it. So what's our main game plan here, right? This is what I'm struggling to see. What's up, Jenna? You're right. We do need an anti eleki That is true. Alolan Eggy is an interesting idea. Uh, Lando's an option. Uh, Lando is a very solid option. Double Dragon is not that bad with Clef. Disagree? Most of the anti-dragon is Dazzling Gleam, so Clef's not really going to help out that much. I think Kartana's a grass type. Kartana's a pretty interesting grass type, actually. With Clefairy supports, Kartana could actually go kind of ham. Is there any, like, neat fourth move that it gets that's not Aerial Ace? Because without Dynamax, I think Aerial Ace is, like, kind of not that great. Okay. Hear me out, guys. Hear me out. For the content... What do we think of Guillotine on Kartana? Do we hate it or do we think it's funny? We get a triple yes from Q. Angela likes it. I feel like this is kind of kind of funny. I, I kind of like it. The, the six that we will be running is a team that we built yesterday here on stream with a lot of input from chat. Uh, we're running Turtonator, Urshifu Rapid Strike, Moltres Galar, Clefairy, Kartana, and Cresselia. We played a couple ladder games on Showdown with this yesterday, and it seemed pretty decent. Anubis. Uh, this to me looks kind of like Kartana food. Wait, really? Milo comes? What is this lead? This just gets owned by Kartana, doesn't it? I'm very confused. I feel like I just U-turn Sing. I don't think there's much that they can do about this. Like, okay, like that's fine. And now, oil. Like, Sing is gonna like own the crap out of this thing. If I hit the Sing, we're like gaming. If I miss, we're actually in a bad spot. Okay, yeah, that's very bad. Like, this is such an auto loss lead to Kartana. But it's a little awkward because of coil hypnosis. I feel like I can get a beast boost off of the Mystic Grix, though. They're probably going to use Blind Hypnosis here. If they hit, that's very bad. Like, me missing Sing... Or not Blind, but, like, 80%. If they if they hit their 80%, we're, like, kind of not in a great spot here. They miss, though. Do I hit? Yes. 
It's just not a very reliable move. Um, not gonna lie. I feel like Helping Hand Leaf Storm or like Leaf Blade is just gonna game, right? Um, I wonder if Leaf Blade kills behind Reflect on the, uh, the Meow Stick. I think I just go into the Milo, honestly. Just like Helping Hand and go into the Milo. That's fine. Like, Entei's still gonna take decent damage from this. Zero sleep turns on the Milo, also very good. We don't have charm revealed, we have fake out and screams. Probably not charm, which is very good for us. Decent damage, no crit there. It's a one and eight to crit. We're gonna take this opportunity to switch in the Turtonator and we're just gonna click sing again. Honestly, Clefairy is so good, dude. We just sit here and click sing. And if I miss sing, it doesn't really matter. If I hit, we're absolutely gaming. All right, Lando kind of sucks for me. But if I hit Sing, we're gaming. Here comes Sacred Fire into the Turtonator. That's going to do no damage. Yeah, we're just kind of gaming. Not going to lie. Pretty simple now. We follow me to make sure we don't get Earth Powered into the switch in. And then we just kind of game, I think. What's up, Grudge Guy? How's it going? Zero sleep turns on the Milo. Keep in mind. That switch on the Entei is really bad for them. They're not actually taking their sleep turns. So, like, if, you're, if you don't take the sleep turns, you're never going to wake up. Now they also have no switch in into my Scarf Urshifu. So now I'm free to just click Surging Strikes and go right back into Kartana. Like, no matter what's on that side, it's dead. Entei is dead. Lando is dead. 65% Meow Stick should also be dead. We don't care about screens, we are in Earth. That is bulky as hell, oh my god. Doesn't matter, but very bulky. I feel like, well, Fake Out is a thing that we do have to respect here. But I don't think I care. Oh, he's running skill swap. What? So he has no attacking move. Well, uh, he got the turn one wake up. And also tried to hit a blind hypnosis. But he got punished. So. Uh, yeah. Um, let's see. They have to... They have prankster hypnosis now. But it has to hit... Uh, also, they're losing one Pokemon guaranteed, even if they hit the Hypnosis. So, that's fine. Entei goes down here. I mean, you can run Stone Edge on it for Volcarona, but you still run Stone Edge on a special Lando Incarnate. What's up, Caffeine? Um... We're in game one. It's very over. We're 4v1 against a Milo right now. Gaming! Gallade, stack attack up, big trick room energy here. Another Milo, why is there so much Milo? All right, uh, this to me is a super easy play. I think this is just fake out Rage Powder, right? Like, what do you do here? I don't understand what he's doing, like what he's actually accomplishing. So I think what we do here is we go Sing and we click Rock Slide in, place the, in case the fake out's into the Clefairy because this doesn't make contact. So I won't take damage from the, um, I won't take damage from the, uh, the Rocky Helmet. Also, super effective into the Zapdos, so that's kind of nice. Alright, no Rage Powder, so he's clicking Spore. Am I faster? Am I faster? No, I'm slower. Can I hit with Sing? Nice. 
so I did not get the flinch. The flinch would have been very good there. The flinch would have maybe won me the game, straight up. We're just gonna spam Sing, man. Like, what if what does my opponent do against a setup Turtonator? They don't really have a way through it. Uh, I was minus one because the Incineroar was the lead. It's, like, reasonably bulky, I would imagine, though. Alright, I feel like we get Spored here on the Turtonator. Do I care? It's it's some chip on the Amogus. It's neutral into the Zapdos. Three turn sleep would be really gaming here. That would be super, super good. On the Amoongus, specifically. The Zapdos is taking its first turn here. Gaming! Okay, Amoongus is faster than my Turtonator. So this Amoongus is not even close to min speed, which is a little interesting. All right, so what we get to do now is really cool. Um, I can go for an Aerial Ace and a Body Press into the Amoongus. The oh, I don't have Aerial Ace, that's right. Okay, that's a little weird. Uh, it's a little weird, champ. But we can go Smart Strike, which should KO from here. And the Body Press covers the switch into the Incineroar. Zapdos, okay, this is the better play from him for sure. The Incin comes in on this side. We're gonna get Spore now on our Turnator. Helmet. I mean, I think this is fine, though. Like, they don't have any way to, like, deal with the Turtonator, right? Like, they can't actually do anything about it. Zapdos comes back in. I think that's one turn sleep on the Zapdos. And now, this is my second turn of sleep on the Turtonator. Oh, big gaming. All right, that's huge. That's really big. Um, the Zapdos can wake up. The Urshifu cannot wake up, I think. Regardless, I think the Urshi we just leave in at this point. I think it's always Body Press the Ensign, just in case they're staying in. Because, like, plus four Body Press is going to do quite a lot here. He doesn't actually switch, so it's got to be Parting Shot, right? No wake up on either side. That's fine. Uh, that does not lower the damage output of Body Press at all. Uh, Amoongus is low enough that a plus four Body Press might kill, but I don't think it does. No, it's not. No, okay. Regenerator is so much HP. Pretty good, though. So if I go into the Zapdos with Surging Strikes, it might kill. But, you know what will kill? For sure. Rock Slide will kill the Amoongus, I think. Uh, it won't kill the Zapdos, but... Hmm... I'm not actually 100% sure. I think I actually serving the Amoongus, just in case the Incin switches back in on the Zapdos side. Uh, I also protect, because this is a very obvious Spore turn. Do I live this? No. Not awesome. Not the worst, though. Like, I get a free switch into my Cortana now. Or my Clef. Either or. I feel like Amoongus either protects or it switches here. But if it switches, or if it protects, the Incin would have come in on the other side. So this is fine. Incin comes in here. I don't really care about this. Um, I guess actually Heat Wave on Zapdos makes this really problematic. I might have thrown this, actually. I didn't think about Heat Wave on Zapdos, which is very sloppy. Okay, that's fine. Hurricane is a very inaccurate move. Plus four? Doesn't actually kill. Wow. Para would have been really cool there. I would have liked Static Para because that means I can't get Sport anymore. That's fine. We're going to click Sing now. Sing Body Press. I need to try to get to plus six too. Like, if I can get the plus six, I'm doing way more offensive pressure into the Amoongus. It's really annoying that I'm slower than the Amoongus. Like, that's, like, actually really, really annoying. All right, this is fine. I'm okay trading Clefairy for Incin. Because now Kartana doesn't have anything to stop it from, like, racking up boosts. Or, like, you know, intimidate it is what I'm trying to say. Plus four, this has to kill. 
Yeah, easy. Now, the issue is I don't have Aerial Ace. So my only way of removing Amoongus from this HP is to click Guillotine. Um, Gallade. That's fine. Uh, it's really good for me that that's the last. I was worried it was going to be Milo, actually. Milo would have been very annoying for me. Um, do I click the guillotine, unironically? Like, I can't kill the Gallade with one hit, but I could combo it. Actually, I feel like uh, Burning Jealousy Leaf Blade is actually the play, right? Because Leaf Blade should take it down super low. Never mind, this was not the play at all. Jesus. Rain Punch! Oh, for fuck's sake. Live? Well, this is really bad. I should have clicked Iron Defense. Yeah, I don't think I have time. Yeah, that Amoongus being faster than my Turtonator is the only reason that match was annoying. I should not have min-speeded this Turtonator. Rodrigo, Galissapod. Interesting. Okay, Dragapult. Uh, this looks like Moltres and Clefairy food, honestly. Do I follow me Nasty Plot here? I mean, like, what, what are they even doing? Like... I think I sing Nasty Plot, actually. Yep. They'll follow me on their side. Well, that's really annoying if I miss. If I miss mine, I'm going to be very sad. If I hit mine, I feel like we're in a pretty okay spot, though. Yeah, never mind. I mean, we have time to wake up here. I mean, like, we just click follow me with Clefairy now. I really like the shiny Galissapod. It's a really cool design. The so Galissapod leaves the field. Lando comes in. I mean, if, if Sing hits, I'm in a really bad spot here. If Sing misses, we're just absolutely fine. Alright. We're gaming. Now, the awkward thing here is that Landorus is going to have Friend Guard. So, you know, we're even at plus two. We're not doing an incredible amount of damage. Yeah, I have to get my gambling streams out of the way before uh, October whatever. No, but Sing is a really cool thing to click, though, because that's the thing. Clefairy is one of those folks. It's like Blind Hypnosis on Gothitelle, right? Like... The Pokemon exists to just be there. Like, it doesn't need to be doing anything with its moves. So clicking Sing on it is, like, actually really decent. All right, this is super fine. Uh, Clef goes down. Uh, we Air Slash the Clefairy. Yeah, I mean, if Galissapod comes in on the Lando side, I don't think I really care that much. All right, we get a double KO here, but we lose our Urshifu. I think that's okay. Wow, never mind. What the fuck? That thing takes so much less damage than I thought it was going to. Oh, that's not great. Yeah, but if you're Dynamaxing, you're not clicking Sleep Powder. Like, I don't... Oh, right, I didn't click uh, thingy. That's fine. Um, Fiery Wrath picks up the KO now since there's no friend guard. Ooh, Galissapod with first impression into Cresselia is kind of scary. Like, I should be fine, though. I'm a Cresselia with max defense. Surely that's fine. Yeah, we're fine. I need to hit this, though. Okay, good. Now, we Moonlight and uh, Fiery Wrath. So here's the issue, right? Landorus outspeeds my uh, Cresselia still, so I do need to actually attack with the Moltres. Otherwise, I could Air Slash the Galissapod, but I think this is always safer because the Galissapod can't use First Impression again anyway. Like, it can use, like, X-Scissor or something, but, like, if it's banded into First Impression, or, ah, it's, it's not banded. 
Mm, I don't know. This, I, I still feel like this is fine. Like, we're getting plus two damage off on the Galissapod. That's pretty good. We have a flinch chance. Moltres is also the best of the Pokemon if you discount abilities entirely. So, like, giving it the best ability would just be kind of dumb. Flinch here would be absolutely gaming. Oh, wait, right. Emergency exit. I forgot about that. Okay, so that's cool. We get rid of the Galissapod. We get a Moonlight here. We do allow it to use First Impression one more time. But Dragapult's the last Mon, so I feel like we're just fine here. I don't die to First Impression here. So what I'm concerned... On Cresselia. So what I am a little concerned about is I'm concerned about First Impression on the Moltres plus, like, Dragon Darts, right? But if I protect the Moltres and he, and he manages to remove the Cresselia... No, I think I always Fiery Wrath here. I think I just have to Fiery Wrath. Yeah, that's what I expected. I just need to live the Dragapult hit, which should be fine with Citrus. Yep. Gaming! Woo! Plus three should be easily taking out both of these Mons. Gaming! 2-1. Nice. Oh, I should probably put the record on. Just so people know how we're doing. Shedinja is super easy for this team. Um, although Kartana doesn't hit it because I don't have Aerial Ace. Actually, it's really just the... I eh, know, I can hit it with Urshi and Turtonator as well. Yeah, we're fine. My game plan here is to apply pressure turn 1 while clicking Trick Room. I have a Mental Herb. No, I don't, actually. I have a Rocky Helmet, so I don't have Mental Herb. Uh, but I have AB, so the Kartana is not going to get one-shotted here. So we're going to go ahead and I think we are going to click... Mm, are we going to click Trick Room? Because I feel like this is a really obvious taunt. We're going to click Icy Wind. Fuck it. Because if he taunts me, this way I kill the Regieleki if it's Sash. Um, I can sort of offset Tailwindy stuff a little bit. Um, Bolt Switch comes in. That's fine. That specs. Oh, or it just crits me. That's also fine. That's really bad. That's really, really bad for me. Uh, he isn't clicking Taunt or Tailwind, so this is a weird turn. But Politoed is dead. I I don't understand any of this. Uh, Hurricane into the Kartana, I guess. But uh, if that doesn't confuse me, I'm fine. Also, I'm faster. So that's not max speed on the Torn. I have so many questions. So the Torn is not max speed, because it should be faster than Kartana. Also, I don't know. This is weird. This is very wonky. Yeah, I mean, as long as I don't get crit... Or as long as I don't get confused here, we'll find a stain with Kartana. This forces the Regieleki back out. I'm just going to keep clicking Icy Wind. I want to position myself so that I can have an, a speed drop on the Regieleki when Kartana comes back in, so then I can just kill it. It also does decent chip into the Torn. Healing is not really an option here with the Cresselia because the rain means uh, that our um, healing move will only heal us for 25%, which would have been fine if I didn't get crit by the Bolt Switch. Necra, thank you for the resub. Welcome back to the Peggy Patrol. I appreciate you. This is exactly why I didn't want to click Trick Room. Uh, Volt Switch comes in once again. That's, again, fine. That thing is doing so much damage, and I can't tell if it's because it's specs or if it's just... Okay, well, I mean, that wasn't a crit. Um, I think it's Specs. Because, like, Cress is Omega bulky. The fact that it took 50% is, like, yeah, yeah, this is... Wait, maybe not? It might be Magnet. Yeah, I guess it might be Magnet. I'm gonna click Burning Jealousy here. Do I click Moonlight here? I feel like this might be, like, not a terrible time to click Moonlight, unironically. No, I think I just keep clicking Icy Wind. Honestly, like, it's good chip. And it prevents them from ever being in a good spot if the Reggie Lucky comes back in. Like, this is fine. Like, if they're going to spend a turn Tailwinding, that's A-OK. -okay. Uh, pretty sure this doesn't kill me. And also, the Rocky Helmet will kill him. Okay, that actually does kill. Crazy. But the Rocky Helmet should deal recoil to the Shedinto, right? Oh, that doesn't make contact? Oh, okay, fair enough. I guess, yeah, it makes sense that it doesn't make contact because it's the item is attacking me. But we break the Sash here anyway. All right, this is not good. We're not in a good spot here. But there's nothing that really deals with the Moltres. And Fiery Wrath into that, into like a 
I feel like... Actually, no, I think we are in a good spot. Even, like, Burning Jealousy doesn't do much to the Tornadus, but it probably does enough to put it in Fiery Wrath range. That's fine. Taking damage on Regieleki is fine by me. Probably Endure on the Shedinja side. That's fine as well. Endure will let it survive both hits. My expectation is that Shedinja switches out here. I think I protect, because this is a pretty clear Volt Switch. Uh, I mean, it could just be Thunderbolt as well. Either way, I worry about Volt Switch into the Moltres. So I think what we do here is we protect. And we just Body Press Reggie Lucky. I feel like Shedinja switches. Okay, yeah. So what I was expecting was Volt Switch into the Moltres into the Shedinja is the game plan here. But because I'm protecting, the Volt Switch won't work. If they Volt Switch into the um, Turtonator, I don't think I care. Oh, it's Thunder. Oh my god. That's not going to kill, right? No shot. All right. No para, please. Okay. Yeah, we're fine. And now there is no way to deal with the Moltres. Game over. Also, no 100% accuracy on the Hurricanes. Honestly, this team is like pretty flames, dude. I think we did a pretty good job. I wanna, yeah, GG. Okay, it looks okay, it looks passable. I don't feel good about this matchup. Uh, I feel a lot less good than I did about the last one. So let's see. Gestroden makes things a little weird. Scissor and the Felinferno come out. Okay, I feel like this is pretty much the worst case scenario, actually. I think we just bring Turt in, right? Or do we go double switch? Do we go Turt on the crest side because of the obvious U-turn? But he could do Swords Dance. I think that's fine, though. Okay, yeah, let's do this. I feel okay about this. Flare Blitz into the Kartana would be a super weird thing to do. It would be very bad for me, though. Yeah, Scissor's Shiny is awful. It's so bad. Alright, that's fine. More damage than I would have liked, but we're going to heal most of it off. Oh, it's Life Orb. That's why. Okay. That's fine. All right. What comes in now? That's the big question, isn't it? Just Rodin. That's okay. I'm super okay with that, actually. I think I switched my Cresselia back in, actually, and sing the, 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 the Gastrodon. I go for the Sing because if I can successfully Sing the Gastrodon, setting up the Turtonator is way more impactful than switching out here. Taunt goes into the Turtonator, not the Clefairy. Muddy Water, not Earth Power. Okay. Interesting. 55% that I hit, as long as I don't get Act Drops. That's pretty big damage. That's actually a, a pretty offensive Gastrodon, but we get the 50-50. That's good. That's good. Now, I think we follow me, body, uh, fire, follow me Iron Defense. And then from there, we can just start clicking. Like, that's A-OK. -okay. Why does Gastrodon look like its eyes are open while it's asleep? That's very off-putting. I don't know how I feel about that. I'm not a big fan. All right, big moment here. He's been asleep for one turn. We're going to go for the big switcheroo into the Cresselia. No, the Cartana. Should not kill, but it'll do a lot. That is A-OK. -okay. Don't mind that in the slightest. Gastro stays asleep. Big gaming. Whoa. All right. I'm super okay to click Leaf Blade here. If he Flare Blitzes my Kartana, then he trades the Ensign for the Kartana. And I'm actually okay with that. And if Scissor comes back in, I'm very happy. Oh, oh, oh no! Oh, no! Oh, I'm so not sorry. 
single target burning jealousy? I don't think this scissor is long for this world. Nice. What do we got? Most of the same stuff we just played against. But there's a Nihi, or there's a Finny in there. Overall, this looks very, very good for Cortana. Alright, this looks like an exceptionally good lead for me. Um, I feel like we get an instant switch on the Finny side. I don't have a good switch in for the cart. Um, but he doesn't want to KO me, so I think we just click this. Oh, wow, he actually does not switch in the instant. Uh, okay, sure. Um, <laughs> all right, then. I'll take it, I guess. We're winning a tournament with this team that we built. This is kind of cool. I didn't expect it to be this good. This is a wonky matchup. I don't like this at all. Turtonator hates this, but I also have to bring it because of the Pharaoh threat. I, I offer coaching. I, I have a couple people who I've been coaching, and I figured that I would offer some coaching. So you can read the thing in the chat. I was wrong. He brought both of the Pokemon that I didn't... If you get coaching, you too can be totally wrong about predicting what your opponent's going to bring. He brought... He led the two Pokemon I expected to not show up to this match. Go me! Uh, I feel like this is actually pretty safe, though. I think I just... um, I think I... Oh, I think... I think Sylveon either protects or switches. I sing the Sylveon. I leaf blade the Regieleki. I feel like this is a pretty good um, lead for me. Unless he's clicking Mystical Fire. Like, no shot he clicked Mystical Fire. I think I might live it, though. That is the best time to get into it, Bardstar. Whenever there's a new gen, it's always a good time to get into BGC. Big moment there. We don't actually get the KO. Sub comes in. Is is Sing a Sing has to be a sound-based move, right? Oh, it is! It is! If it wasn't, then I would have said, but it failed. It didn't say, but it failed, which means it can hit through substitutes. Um, I really want to... I want to sing that Sylveon behind the sub so badly. I might still live Mystical Fire because of my Assault Vest, plus the fact that it's non-stab, plus the fact that I have Friend Guard. Not with Iron Barbs, though. Still gonna do good damage, though. Yeah, that's pretty decent. Okay, I live this. Now hit, 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 hit. Please, please, please. Please. Let's go! Sound-based move! Sound-based move! Gaming! Let's go! I love when I win entirely off the back of not my skill, but my opponent making a mistake, and then me also getting really lucky. All right, Obstagoon and Latias. Ooh, this is a cool team. This is a really cool team. Game number eight. Six and one. Bailed out of one of them. Let's see if we can capitalize. Obstagoon, Rillaboom. This feels like a very good lead for, um, for my Moltres. Griselia, not as much, but I think this is fine. I think I could just switch to the Clefairy here. And I think I just click Nasty Plot. Ooh, this looks like knockoff potentially. Alright, that's kind of what I expected. Taunt! Okay, that's fine. No knockoff? Interesting. How do I do about this? I feel like I just click Moonblast, actually, into the Obstagoon. I feel like that's actually not a bad... That's going to do quite a lot of damage. Clefairy... Stab Moonblast is, like, pretty decent. Parting Shot goes in. That's fine. I got a plus one, totally. Wait. Oh, they're running double Parting Shot. Oh, that's kind of cool. Oh. No, Incin would be fine. Incin is healthy for the game. Incin's really good. Incin makes it so that you can't lose to bad players who run dumb gimmick teams. That crit really kind of sucks. I'm not gonna lie. The Gooner comes back. Fair enough. A little bit of damage. That's actually. Like, that's like. Okay, it's crit. <laughs> I was gonna say, that's like pretty good damage for Clefairy. So I don't think Obstagoon can do anything, and like Incin can't do much either into my, uh. 
like ice punch is like the best thing obviously gonna probably actually does it get play rough there's no shot he's running play rough there's no universe oh right that's a thing knock off that's fine that's fine i mean i lose the citrus which kind of sucks i'm plus two now though pretty good damage Ooh, he taunts the Moltres. Okay. I was being really greedy there. I was going for plus four. That was good. That was well played. I'm still plus one, though. Nice. Guys, Clefairy just picked up a KO on its own. It, well, it KO'd the, the Obstagoon from full. It did, I mean, it took two moves, but still. That's pretty good. You go, Clefairy. You go. Uh, something that is worth noting. I don't have Fake Out, or I don't have Protect on my Clefairy. Uh, one more turn of Grassy Terrain is like, pretty fine, though. I think we just... Oh, right. I'm taunted. Uh, that's pretty annoying. Uh, use Air Slash, the Rillaboom with plus one, and... I think I just Helping Hand, right? I feel like they probably fake out my Moltres, but like... Oh, they left! GG! <laughs> uh, Cresselia seems pretty good into this. I think we go Cress here. Click Icy Wind a bunch. Like Iron Defense. I like the instant. Interesting lead. Um, I feel like this is fine for us. This looks like Follow Me Trick Room. For me. Like, that's what, that's what the opponent will probably assume. So I think the fake out goes into the Cresselia. But anyway, we're going to click this just in case. We're going to sing the Incineroar. I'm not super concerned about this. Reggie Alecki can put a big dent in my Clefable, uh, into my Clefairy's HP, which does kind of suck. But it can't kill it. I mean, it can. It can if it's running Electro Ball like Specs. Big damage from the Rocky Helmet. That's always nice. And that goes into the Crest. That's super fine. Crest doesn't give a shit. If I hit the thing here, we're gaming. Nice. Let's go. I kind of want to click the funny button. I'm going to click the funny button, guys. One time. One time we're going to click the funny button. One time. What's up, CJ? How's it going? One time. I haven't clicked it all day, and I probably won't click it again. One time. Oh, my God. It worked. It worked. <laughs> That was a 1573 rated player, so we're gonna pick up a lot of points from that. What if I what if I move my camera? Can you see it then? You can see it! You can see it now. We are rank one at the Hello everybody, future Pengi here. Just wanted to stop by and let you guys know how the tournament actually finished. Uh, it takes a little while for them to tally the results and give us a final standing, but uh, we, we do have that now. So there we go. Third place overall, there were 73 participants, so I would say that's a resounding success with the team. Uh, funny thing to note as well, Ash and Loinam, the two people who finished above us, we actually beat both of them along the way. So, uh, overall, an incredibly close tournament. 73 players is a pretty big one. I really wasn't sure how many there were, so that's really cool to see. And uh, we can see there's some really, really impressive players in there. You know, uh, Javier at the bottom in uh, rank 7 there. Sebas in there as well. Ash is uh, Johnzu, who farms a lot of these online tournaments. He does crazy well in a lot of these ladder tournaments. Uh, but yeah, overall, I'm super happy with that. You know, we, we had a really, really good run. And uh, I'm really pleased with the team that chat built with me. I think this is definitely something we're going to do again. Uh, so make sure that you're following the stream. And uh, yeah, just come on by and be part of the team building process. Be part of our run for another chance at, a, at maybe a top three. Maybe we can even win one with a team that chat builds. Anyway, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.